One of the most common problems being reported in the forums at the moment are Maven problems. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time over this video looking at what a good Maven build looks like and some some of the most obvious Maven problems that people might be having. So this is my code base in here. I've checked it out of the repository. The first thing I'm going to do is get a command line up. Now I only recently discovered that in the top of the Windows Explorer I could type in command to get the command line up and have it appear in the correct place. I've now been using this all the time, so I'm just taking a point to demonstrate that to you now. Now when we're working with Maven, we're working with Maven issues, we will do the vast bulk of the work from the command line. And the reason we're going to do that is when we work from the command line, we only have Java and Maven that we're dealing with. Nothing else is getting in the way. There's no IDE com uh, confusing any issues. There's no other applications confusing anything. So we can work directly with where the problem is. So first of all, let's have a quick look and see what a clean build looks like, a good clean build. So the first thing I'm going to type in is maven clean compile. I'm going to put in the option minus D skip tests equals true. Now you do a maven clean to get rid of the code that we might have compiled. Compile is going to put us through into the, the point in the the workflow where it's actually going to compile the, the code. And to do that, it needs the libraries. Therefore, this is going to force a download of any libraries that are not there. I'm going to do a skip test equal true because I don't really want to run the test. I just I run the unit test. I just want to compile the code. So by running this command, it will cause a basic build to happen, a basic compile of the code, and it will cause us to download any dependencies. So you can see there, it's downloading the Firefox dependency because I removed the Firefox jar from my cache. Then we have some basic messages in there and then we have a build success. So that's basically what a clean build looks like. We have to get in the habit of looking at the messages that come through in the build. Because if anything went wrong in the download, it would tell me here. I would get a build error, but if anything went wrong, I have to look at the error messages that are up here. That's how we're gonna know if there's a problem and that's how we're gonna know where the problem actually happens. Now the simplest solution to a lot of our problems is simply to remove some of the jar files, the downloaded jar files from the repository. So to do that, let me get an explorer over here. I want to go to where my repository is. If I just type in, go off to the user profile and the .m2 directory. So this is where my repository is, my local cached repository. If I go in there, we can start to see all the class paths that are in place for Java. Now, if I'm having any problems, delete some of the directories in here and force it to re-download them. So if I'm having problems with Selenium, I might very well just come down here into org, Selenium HQ, and just delete everything to do with Selenium and force it to re-download. What I'm gonna do in this case is just force it to download the Firefox driver. So by deleting that Firefox driver folder, if I go back to the command line where we're running, If I issue that command again, maven clean compile minus d skip tests equal true. This time it would download all the parts related to the Firefox driver because I've removed it from my repository cache. So if you're having any issues with corrupt jars or missing jars or download issues, the best thing to do is Try and do a maven clean compile minus d skip test equal true to force a re-download. If you've got a corruption, delete the file first, delete it from the local cache repository, then do maven clean compile minus d skip test equal true. So other commands we might be tempted to use. Um, we might be tempted to uh, force an update. This doesn't work all the time and doesn't necessarily do uh, download all the dependencies that you're looking for. But if I do a maven clean compile and put in the minus u, then do a minus d skip tests equal true.
I think that forces an update of the uh, snapshots rather than the actual libraries. So it may not fix your actual problem. What we might want to do is a dependency purge. If I do maven dependency purge local repository. Oops. Then you can see it's starting to download the dependencies. So I'm forcing Maven to download the actual dependencies. So whether you want to do a dependency colon purge local repository, or whether you want to just clean out the repository and do a Maven clean compile minus the skip tests, that's up to you. Either one of those is a, a good approach for re-downloading the dependencies if you've got problems. So while that's going on in the background, basic things are Maven maintains all the jar files in the user profile.m2 slash repository. That's your cache. That's where Maven has downloaded all the jars that you're going to use. If you're having a problem with either missing jars or corrupt jars or something going wrong with your project, chances are you've got an issue with those dependencies. So what you do is you delete them and force them to re-download with a maven clean compile minus d skip test equal true or maven uh, dependency purge local repository. That will then get your maven repository in the right state where you can run the codes. And remember, we're doing all this from the command line because then all the errors are obvious and visible and all we're working with is Java and Maven. Nothing else is getting in the way. Once you've got things working at the command line, that's when you then move into the IDE and that's when you then try and do things from the IDE. But do not try and fix your Maven problems from the IDE because you will have too much stuff in the way and too many things getting confused.